you want to hear a story about time travel, head pats, and gross parental neglect? A story that is equal parts mind-bending, heartwarming, and tragic? An old ages story from Front Wing, the people who brought you the Grisaya series, as well as some straight up hentai? Well, I hope you do, because that's what I'll be reviewing today. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present the simply titled Island. The plot of Island is easy to summarize. An amnesiac guy washes up on an island. He meets three cute girls. After goofing around with said cute girls, he then proceeds to choose one to pursue and help them with their problems. So far, so standard, right? Well, said amnesiac guy believes he's from the future and has a mission to save the world slash a girl. The inhabitants of the island suffer from a mysterious illness called Sutlight Syndrome, which turns their body to ash, and the girls are not the most mentally stable. So, along with fixing whatever your current heroine's problem is, you also get to slowly unravel the mysteries behind the island. You are forced to do the two side heroines routes first, which are pretty bog standard if well written, and then, once you get a ways into the main heroines route, the story really comes into its own. Genuinely surprising plot twists come flying at you, mysteries are eloquently solved, and many head pats are given. Sadly, I can't talk about a couple of super important characters without major spoilers, so I'll focus on our protagonist and the three main heroines here. The protagonist, Setsuna, is goofy, kind, and a bit perverted. He lacks a certain amount of common sense and has a knack for attracting trouble, but he can get things done when he sets his mind to it. Oh, and while he is yet another amnesiac protagonist, his initial amnesia actually has a very plot-relevant reason to exist, so it's not just a crutch the writers are using to make it easier to explain the world. As for the heroines, well, they're all daughters of the three ruling families on the island, with parents that are dead, deadbeat, or just plain bad. Karen is easy to describe. She's a cindere. Full stop. No seriously, that's the only real description you need for her character. She's pretty much a clone of Michiru from Grisaya, but she's not just trying to be a cindere, she fully embodies it. Then we have Sarah, the first lolly of the series. Supposedly she's 16, but she really doesn't look it. And her maturity level varies between being a wise elder and a 6 year old kid. She has a great deal of passion, but doesn't always have the best grip on reality, which is not a great combination. All that being said, she's still really lovable, and easily my favourite of the characters I'm discussing. Finally, completing our quirky cast, there's Rine, an Ojo-sama halfway shut-in who only goes out at night and has a history of being spirited away. She can appear to be a strong individual, stubborn and kind. But ultimately, her problems take Setsuna just a bit longer to fix than the other two heroines. Island does a really good job setting up its mystery. It gives you just enough hints that you can start to make some guesses early, but you'll still get caught off guard by the plot twists that follow. Then, looking back, you'll find that there were more hints for the twists earlier that you just missed. While there are some more fantastical elements of this story, it seems to enjoy trolling you if you use them too much to explain away every mystery. It really encourages you to think about all the possibilities of how something might have happened. Mystery aside, the other thing that'll draw you into this story is an urge to protect the heroines. The story makes quite sure that you care about them from an early point, that you empathize with them, and that you can't bear to see them hurt. As such, when the story comes around to Setsuna's quest to protect a heroine's smile, you as the reader are highly invested and cheering him on the whole way. Also, because this story has no H scenes, these quests feel much more wholesome and heartwarming. I cannot say how much I appreciated not having to feel guilty while reading Sarah's route, the way I would have if this story had been 18 plus. Lastly, I should just mention, without too many spoilers, that this story really comes into its own in winter. So, whatever you do, please make sure not to drop it before that point. One problem I found while reading Island is, well, Karen's route. It just felt, I don't know, generic. Like you could pick it up and drop it in another VN without having to change much at all. Also, it didn't feel like much happened. The amount of new information we got about Island's mysteries were pretty minor, 
and most of the drama in the story was caused by Karen and Setsuna being really stupid. It's not bad per se, it does tell a concise romantic story with heart, but it's definitely a step down in quality from the rest of Island. Other than that, well, there's just the true ending. Bleep the true ending, 50 ways sideways. I won't discuss it now, to keep this part spoiler free, but I'll have just a bit of a rant about it at the end of the video. I loved the vast majority of Island. The mystery, the romance, the head pats, the time travel, but I cannot wholeheartedly recommend it. The true ending just left too bad a taste in my mouth. If you're the type of person where the journey matters more than the destination, then definitely read Island. Otherwise, well, proceed with caution. If you've already read Island and are looking for something similar, Keys Air has a very similar plot structure, but its ending is even worse. Alternately, you could also try out Spirit Circle, which although it is a manga and not a VN, does have some similar themes and a much more satisfying conclusion. Anyways, thank you for listening. This ends the spoiler-free part of the video. If you haven't already finished reading Island, please don't watch the next bit. Island's story has a lot of plot twists, and you'll be really ruining the whole thing for yourself if you continue watching right now. Also, I haven't seen the anime, but my understanding is that the ending is different, so this next bit only applies to the VN. Okay, that being said, let's dive into a discussion of Re, the true slash final ending to Island. To be blunt, I hated it. There's so much wrong with it. Where to start? Well, how about the fact that it isn't even really an ending? Telling us, and then Setsuna abandoned his daughter and wife, and went into cold sleep, again. And, oh look, we're back where we started. Is not a proper way to wrap up a story. Instead, it's more of a, hey, we're not going to finish the story here. You better pray there's a sequel. The thing that makes it even worse is that the other ending to Rina's Root felt nice and complete and did wrap everything up. I felt satisfied coming out of it, and would have been happy if the story had just ended there. But then we get the reroute which not only has a less satisfactory ending, but also ruins the other ending by revealing that, yeah, you just married your daughter. Seriously, what the hell? I mean, I can't blame Setsuna, he didn't know. But Kuon, why would you let your husband marry your daughter? What the bleep is wrong with you? More specifically, why did you ever let your husband even date your daughter? Just tell him that you're the Rina he's been looking for, help him regain his memories, and end it there. Oh, and Uren would have known too after the gene test she did. Did it never cross her mind to say something in that ending the way she did in the true ending? Seriously, the information you get in the re-ending make both Kuon and Uran seem like pretty terrible people. While we're on the topic of terrible people, I should note that the re-ending makes it canon that Setsuna had sex with and impregnated a 13-year-old girl. There goes all the heartwarming appeal of the story. Maybe this was explicitly stated in the Winter Root and I missed it there somehow, but regardless, it wasn't clear to me until the re-ending this had occurred, and yeah, I really would have been much happier not knowing that Setsuna's a pedophile. Continuing from Setsuna's a terrible person to Setsuna's an idiot, his decision to go into cold sleep again makes no sense. First, could he not just stay with Kuon and help her finish the time machine she's working on? Is that not a better option than maybe somehow finding a time machine in the future? Also, if he was going to cold sleep, he should have taken a journal with him, with all his memories written down. The first time we see him enter cold sleep, where it's sort of a panicked moment, it makes sense for him not to have prepared anything. The second time though, he had all the time in the world to plan things out. Did it never occur to him that having more than two words to jog his memory might be useful? Seriously, my opinion of so many of the characters took a nosedive in the true ending. If I had a time machine, I'd travel to the past and tell myself to stop reading after I hit the first ending of Rina's Root. I felt so much better about the story at that point. Anyways, thanks once again for listening. If you disagree with my thoughts on the ending, please do comment below, but make sure to put a spoiler warning first. Cheers!